Hey kiddies, it's Triple Feature Tuesday once again, and this week it's Black Friday the 13th. This finally gets us to part eight. Now, the, uh, starting with part eight, we have a three movie trend of the main African American character in a Friday the Thirteenth becoming more and more badass as you know the generations progress, and it all starts with Julius, played by B. C. Dupree. Julius is a boxer in the high school that is celebrating uh, their senior, their graduation on this ocean liner. Uh, I think it's called the Lazarus, because, you know, reasons. Uh, not only does Julius survive the boat cull and then the boat sinking and seemingly being thrown off of the boat, it's quite high off the water in a storm. But somehow Julius manages to stay close to the boat before it sinks and manages to get onto the one life raft that escaped featuring our main white characters. Three quarters of the way through the movie, they finally got two Manhattan, which, you know, false advertising. Jason takes Manhattan. They're barely in New York. Unfortunately, punks immediately steal the fo our survivor girl, Rennie, and uh, everybody splits up to try to find her and or get in touch with the police. Uh, Julius manages to get to a, tel uh, a phone booth, but of course, since he is the black guy and Jason's behind schedule as it is, Jason goes after him first. They chase, get chased around for a while. Julius gets one over on every uh, stupid teenager in a horror movie that runs up the stairs. Not only does he run up stairs of an abandoned building, he runs up onto the roof! I don't know what his plan was. I mean, you're well, you're a couple stories off the ground. There is no escape. And, you know, there isn't. Jason gets up there, and he's standing between Julius and the ladder to get down. But Julius... Julius is badass. So he starts boxing Jason. I mean, I gotta tell you, the will to win was incredible because there are two type, two ways to approach uh, a horror movie, if you are in one, which I tend to consider myself always in one. You can, e you can either draw upon the will to live or the will to win. Now, the will to live will just is just that it's going to get you as far as you can to just live and that's not really any sort of guarantee because you're only going to fight so hard now the will to win the will to win is about crushing the bad guy and getting him and killing him because if you kill him you're free. That's it. He's dead. You will live. Now, granted, it's 50-50 if you're going to actually, you know, beat the guy, but at least you're going into it with the right approach. This is why Nancy survives at the end of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 1. It's why Alan Ripley in Am Aliens gets it done. It's so awesome. So, Julius goes in with the will to win and starts bare-knuckle boxing against Jason who's wearing a hockey mask and is an undead enforcer of God's morality. So, so basically Jason just punches Julius's head off. Because what else the hell else is Jason going to do? I sort of, it, it, I know it's not true at all, but I always sort of read it as like a sort of begrudging respect Jason had for Julius in that he punched him punched the head off. He, like, met him on Julius's level since Julius was trying to meet him on his, and, uh... <sighs> Poor guy. Ah, uh, Jason, what a dick. <laughs> Jason goes to hell the final Friday, ups the game, ups the game in terms of African-American guys. But that's about it. Jason Goes to Hell is just terrible. I hate this movie, but it's gonna be neat, because this is the first time at a triple feature party I've actually ever shown it, because, again, it's terrible. So, Creighton Duke, played by Stephen Williams, who, uh, Stephen Williams, he's great. He's one of those guys. He's a good character actor, pops up in a lot of things, like uh, the Blues Brothers. He was on the X-Files. He was on Supernatural for a while. He's just always just a great, great time. And he's wonderful in this is this crazy bounty hunter, Creighton Duke, who is always going around in a black duster and a cowboy hat, because you're going to tell him he shouldn't? Creighton Duke uh, knows the secret origin of Jason Voorhees and knows the only way in which you can stop him. Did I mention Jason Goes to Hell sucks? But Creighton 
is so good because uh, he ends up getting arrested and uh, the hero of the movie played by uh, Stephen LeMay, who was actually the re a regular on Friday the 13th, the series, which was completely unrelated to Friday the 13th, the movies, but he's the only person that can claim be, uh, having been in both. So he ends up in the jail cell next to Creighton Duke, and uh, he needs he wants the information that Creighton has, and the price Creighton offers is to just break his fingers, because Creighton's got more money than he'll ever need, and it amuses him to break those little white boy's fingers, like, a lot. <laughs> the, you can see, watch him, he's just giddy doing it, and it's hilarious. But at the, by the end of the movie, they are all teamed up and fighting Jason, and uh, Creighton is really going for it. He is trying so hard to kill Jason. He even uh, handcuffs himself to Jason to give uh, the heroes time to get away, slash to try to take him out, and he's just, oh... The will to win. He goes after it. He's trying. He's going to take him down, even though he knows he can't. It's just, oh, you take yourself out of it and just try to destroy the monster. I love this shit. But all of the heart of Julius and the sadism slash badassery of Creighton Duke is taken to the next level, as all things are taken to the next level in Jason X. That's right. The movie that was not satisfied with just putting Jason in space. No. We will have Robo Jason in space. Oh my god. Jason X is a gift to the world, and anybody that tells you different just hates life. Period. Who hurts you people who don't like Jason X? Why can't you just have fun? Robo Jason in space. Uh, the spaceship is populated uh, equal parts uh, college science-y archaeologist type people, and army people, and the leader of the army people is Sergeant Brodsky, played by Peter Mensa. Uh, of, of this is madness fame. He gives the setup. This is madness. No, this is Sparta. And this is Robo Jason in space. Brodsky makes a deal with the professor to uh, try to keep Jason alive, capture Jason so that the professor can make money. Immediately tells all his grunts, no, kill this guy. Kill this guy because he's killing us, and then we'll pretend there was no other choice because that professor is an idiot, Brodsky, who gets stabbed, typical Jason stabbing through uh, a wall and impaled in his stomach. Brodsky's response, it's going to take a lot more than that to put down this old dog. Jason obliges and stabs him another time through the other side of his back. Brodsky, Brodsky's response, that ought to do it. But it doesn't. Brodsky takes himself off of his impalement to uh, go after Jason on his own. And when he Jason has the kids cornered, Brodsky comes in and saves them. He's leaking out of four holes in his body. Also, it's Peter Mensa. The dude is in absurd shape. He doesn't have enough body to really take four holes. But no, Brodsky does it. And then they fix Brodsky up, and he makes it all the way to the end of the movie. And, much like Creighton Duke, sacrifices himself for the other people to get by. This time, it makes a bit more sense, uh, because Brodsky is military. He is there to protect the civilians. And, oh my god, the shot is just Brodsky I like eyeballing Jason. Jason eyeballing Brodsky, and they go at, go at each other, and then everything explodes! Uh, probably because the ship was just going to explode. I'd like to think that not even a ship designed to withstand the rigors of the vacuum of space could contain that much awesome happening at that moment. But it's not over. Jason survives the explosion and is floating towards our heroes in the rescue craft and is about to get onto the ship and kill them all some more when, out of nowhere, Brodsky. Brodsky's there, and Brodsky rides Jason, in fairly homoerotic fashion, into the atmosphere of the nearby planet, and theoretically incinerating Jason. I mean, we know he didn't die. But Brodsky died. But Brodsky died doing his level best. I mean, it was everything Brodsky could do short of throwing Jason into the sun. It's so good! And, unfortunately, that's where it ends, in terms of badass black people, in 
the Friday the 13th movies, the next film, Freddy vs. Jason, a movie which, if I could, you know, beatify, I would. It's just Saint Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, it has the only, uh, there are two, uh, prominent black characters. Uh, one is the head psychiatrist at, uh, Westfield, Westfield, Westview? Weston Hills, that's the name of the asylum in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. First appeared in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3, The Dream Warriors. Uh, but he's sort of a one-note character. And then uh, Kelly Rollins uh, of Destiny's Child fame is one of the main teenagers. And I will grant her that moment that she has that good moment where she's just making fun of Freddy and giving him shit right to his face. You know, right before Jason kills her. But up until that point, she was really annoying. And then Friday the 13th, the remake, which uh, featured one black teenager in the group and was just, you know, cannon fodder. That was about it. Uh, but man, for that brief three movie period from 9, 10, and 11, uh, Julius Creighton Duke and Brodsky the baddest ass black guys in all of Friday the 13th history so far. Either way, I uh, hope everybody has fun on their Friday the 13th slash, th 13th slash uh, this week's installment of Black Awesome this month, and I will see you guys next week.